Have you, is it, is yeah, it's kind of like fucker's colorblind dude. He's got inferior yeah. genes. I don't think it's, a it's like, like it's like yellow it's scale no, almost. It looks uh, dim. It's like colorblind settings. It's high contrast. Oh, yeah. is that better? Still? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Okay, okay. it's fine. It's really um, matter. I have Fuckers colorblind, colorblind. unlucky, disabled coach. Feels bad. Get wrecked, uh, noob. In <laughs> oh, God, now I feel bad. Shit. Oh, uh, no, it's fine. Strikes are abusive. Wait, if you can't see the jail review. Specifically the offense here, because like I don't want this to be like a three-hour vod, so I'm just gonna focus on this because it's where you guys sort of struggle the most. And a lot of this was like not controlling space that matters. You guys were controlling space, but the space didn't matter, so you like couldn't get value. Like especially your Reaper, like like your Reaper, like what space you control for your Reaper is like really big because your Reaper player could be like literally the best player in the world, but he's got shotguns, and if he's shooting from this far away, he can't win this duel. And like granted, then you're like, okay, well we have Cree, but then it's like, okay. Then are we still down a man because our Reaper is not being enabled? So we definitely need to be conscious about that here. And this is like, I'm gonna bully Bot Ranch here a lot. Oh, yeah, man, baby, bring it on. Uh, right here, like, we have this problem. Obviously, this is scouted, like, we all have eyes, we can see we, there are shots being traded between these two. There is a room right here that would literally allow your reaper to close this distance without getting shot your whole team closes this distance without getting shot again we don't care about tracer because tracer's just a bad character right now but we're like at least against brawl like she can't really duel anybody or take any fights here so this person just needs to switch they're not switching so we just ignore them like if they're 5v6 at this point the problem is a pocketed hanzo how do we deal with this pathing we pad through this room we close this distance Anzo shooting you guys here is obviously pretty bad compared to you guys walking right right by him and your bap just standing right under him. Like we can obviously like I know like you're in the game, it's hard, you know, like you have limited FOV, like you can't you're like trying to play the game, aim bank decisions, like I'm I'm fully aware. But like looking at it from this perspective, I'm sure everyone can see how the site's about to turn out when we don't contest the hand, like our baps obviously like forces lamp, and then tracer like Finally gets to deal two damage and get value maybe. And when if your bat dies, like Lucio obviously can't outheal anything, especially when they're running Zen. You guys trade a lot, but the main problem here was the uncontested Hanzo. You guys could have pathed around it and made him irrelevant or need him to reposition, and you probably would have won that fight. Here we have a Lucio. And our spawn is like 100 meters. Theirs is like more around 300. Right now, I want to see you four just amping in. Like, I get this is like not, it, it feels wrong. But if you're watching a kill feed, like your, your Kree just traded his life, which is big. They might try to res. If you amp speed in here, there's a chance you catch the Mercy before she gets to res, kill her too. Then it's just Zarya. Ryan gets back. You win. It's like we're seeing multiple chances to win here, and we're just not taking them. I think it's because we didn't have that information. Like, we knew yeah, we we people did. were we being tricked, but we don't know right who was there or not. And uh, maybe and that, that information just wasn't communicated. Yeah, yeah, that might be on your Kree, but, like... It's, like, sort of, because everyone has a kill feed. So, like, I could say, like, Kree should have said, only Zarya, Mercy on point, push, 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 push. Like, your hitscan player can literally be muted all game and, like, have not really any impact because they're not really responsible for information and stuff. Your brain is only good for aiming, so shut the fuck up. Yeah, pretty much. Like, DPS is like, you take duels and you click people, and if you have information, like, I'm looking for a stun or someone's behind, like, then you use that information. Here. But I didn't say anything. What is the problem with this comp? What is the one issue that this comp struggles with? It's a 6-0 comp, we know that. Just really quickly, anyone know the one struggle for this comp? Poke. Range. Yep. Range. Correct. Closing distance is the hardest thing for this comp, which is why we have Lucio, and he's primarily speeding, because he's enabling this person, this person, this person. Without speed, these people are out of the fight 60% of the time. They can't poke, they can't deal damage, can't charge their ults. They just feed, alt charge, and feed. So going high ground, sure. But now you're literally, your pathing here is. Okay. Comparative to 
So we can sort of think how this pathing is like really playing into their comp and really hurting our comp. And again, with this information I just explained, we can sort of see how this fight's gonna turn out. So, because like in a lot of scrims, like how good you are isn't really in factor. Because you're, you're, you guys are plat, they're plat. Whichever team plays more like a team is gonna win. If you guys path bad and you play your comp wrong, you're gonna lose. And the same thing for them. If they have a bad comp or play their comp wrong, they're gonna lose. Like the question is, are you knowing? Like, are you paying attention to this? Like, are we paying attention to like what characters they are having? Oh, the words are hard. This is why. Okay. Uh, what their comp wants to do. So their comp has a Hanzo who's pocketed and a Tracer who's scouting, and a Zen. Zen Hanzo, pocketed Hanzo. They're playing for poke more. They just have Ryan Zari to brawl. Like their Ryan Zari are literally doing nothing this whole time. It's just the Zen and these two. And Tracer is literally doing nothing except for being like, yo, they're walking this direction. Like, cool. Very helpful, Tracer. Um, so we play into the Hanzo. We're not alt tracking the Hanzo, which is big sad because he literally killed like five people last fight. So we should sort of be paying attention to that. It was sort of calmed over or not paid attention to. And then we path into a tunnel, which tough. Yeah, it's fine. Probably just get in the habit of like alt tracking after every fight or after every regroup or something like that. Then. I knew Trace was yep. up there, damn it. That Typically, I didn't explain this. Oh, this looks perfect. Nice little background. Um, when a fight is going on, we're target calling. And this is sort of like first day Sunday sort of thing. Uh, we're target calling mid fight. After the fight, we're gonna like, someone needs to call winnable or losable winnable means now we might commit alts hopefully this was talked about but this means we're committing to this fight so like when your Cree was on point and died and then like saw everyone coming back you could be yelling winnable winnable it's, it's only these two on point go 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 we have fast respond go 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 like you're calling winnable now if if ryan is already saying it's lost just die just lie just die die then then that's called you see how this communication is like linked with what's about to happen yeah, so yeah. if we're communicating this then we call losable, then we go to alt tracking. Now everyone shuts up, you mute your mics and everyone lets your alt tracker talk. This is your alt tracker, they're talking. If your alt tracker has a question, like did they pulse? Then, you know, one or two people, you know, you guys probably talk at the same time or whatever, answers the question and then you go back to listening. So like if your alt tracker wasn't paying any attention, it doesn't matter because they'll ask. Like if, if the alt tracker has a question, like did they use this, did they, did they do this? answer the question don't you sort of see how this is like is like structuring like let them go and the second the all tracker finishes their sentences and we can like imagine the period at the end then whoever wants to pre-fight goes like does Azaria want to look to alt to grab like do we have grab or are we looking to path a certain way is this is this our win con is like getting to a certain space our win condition is that what we're looking for how, how like, do we want to use alt like maybe we beat aggressively then we just like play through the um Whatever that room is that I was explaining, like right to the left of choke, is called um, hotel. hotel, right? Yeah. Hotel. Like maybe we want a window early to like control space. Like you sort of see how this is playing out, and like a lot of these alts, like hopefully you're doing sort of like an A B C structure, which is like or one two three, whatever you want to call it, like step by step. So like maybe we look for early grav to like pick their tanks. And, you know, if that doesn't work, we'll high noon from high ground. You know, then then it's like maybe we win fight off grab. We don't need any other alts. So then like now we're winning alt economy. We didn't use this. We didn't use this. We didn't use this. We didn't use this. We use this. We didn't use this. So now we have five alts and we want to fight or one alt. Typically you're gonna want to use two to three alts per fight. Six characters. You guys should be cycling alts pretty well. Like two to three is fine. You know, if you get into like the four to six alt range, you're two CP map and you're trying to finish it fast, which is perfectly fine. But these need to be staggered. It needs to be like open with one or two then if the fight's called winnable commit like then you can commit more like three then you commit to three to six so like this is where your teamwork comes in the communication like and this is pre-fighting you can sort of see how like none of this is done in comp and this is like hard to do in scrims so this is pre-fight and again before that we were all tracking and a lot of the times when we're all tracking if we're all tracking like not to call you out or anything but 
like a lot of times we're talking over each other. There's not even like a comfortable way to start talking without like just yelling over each other. Uh, we need to use this information. It's accurate, like a hundred percent of the times. Not one time did Crown say they have an all they didn't have. Sometimes like we didn't notice if they had shatter, but like every time it was like, what else do they have? Oh, they have trance and they have grab. Like hundred percent accurate. They literally were at like ninety five percent or had it. Use that information. If we know they have dragons, we don't want to go in a hallway. This should affect our pre-fight. We're using this information. Otherwise, there's no point in alt tracking if we're not going to use the information. Because, like, we're just wasting time. Why are we, like, listening to what else they have if we're not going to use the info? So make sure we're alt tracking for a reason. And then we're using that info to, like, sort of see how the fight's going to play out. And most of these fights, like I said, skill isn't a factor. They sort of are played out before they happen. Like... And that's just like how this game works. You guys could literally be, I told Strax and DMs, I was like, I could have this team scrumming 3-4. Because you guys are all good enough to be 3-4 players mechanically. It's just you're not paying attention with game sense and macro stuff. And that's might be because you haven't been taught it or you're newer or whatever. But like if you learn this macro stuff, like the fact they have a Hanzo and a Zen and they're playing for poke and that affects how you want to path and how you want to set up your characters, like, this is what wins and loses games and comp too and scrims especially because it's like all you're playing for. This is this isn't like oh your reaper is bad. That's not why he's doing anything. It's like literally we're pathing to where his character can't play. So essentially you're five v six. Five v sixes aren't great. And like on top of that, your Ryan can't play because he's got a hammer. So we're like not setting up for characters. Like we're going in four v six just because our pathing and planning is questionable. So here, I'm gonna I'm gonna bully the main support now or off support, flex flex support. We have this ult. This is this goes for like bongos. I know it's not support, but any sort of damage modifier. Mainly, it's like window and valk are the two that cycle other ultimates. If you get window or valk fast, and say your Kree doesn't have ult or this doesn't like, you can use that like window fire strike, like good combo. But that's like even if it just hits like their Zarya and their Ryan. Your Ryan just got 400 damage worth of alt charge, which is like 40% of his alt. So you could like, this goes back to sort of what I said about the, the one, two, three plan. I'm going to window early, go for fire strike, and then we'll play for mid, mid fight shatter. Like, does that sound complicated or hard to comprehend to say mid game? Maybe a little bit, but still it's like, yo, throw a window here. I'll fire strike. And then we'll sort of play slow until I get shattered. Like if I'm at 90%, we amp speed in and I'll shatter the second I get it. That's a really good plan. We're only committing one to two alts. Like maybe we get picked right when we window. That's fine. Like we didn't use shatter. We didn't get it yet. We'll play. We'll like have it later. It's like minimal lost, high chance of success. And then like if we get high noon, we can high noon from high ground if we get that. Like we can sort of set up these plays. Like they're not complicated and they're really good for like success and stuff. Like little plays like high noon early and then bubble. Like, what are you committing? High noon? High noon's like kind of a shitty ultimate. You're committing bubble. That's a 12 se 10 second cooldown. Like, you could lose that fight, and it has no effect on your next fight, really. Like, high noon bubble from here and just control the space. That, like, huge. Then, like, now you get this corner for your Ryan. Now they're back here in this suboptimal position. Maybe their Ryan got isolated and separated from his team, and you guys can amp speed on him. Like, sure, Hondo is still a problem, but, like, you get what I'm saying. Mm hmm. Nice. I like the way that was explained a lot. Me too. Thank you. Do you guys have any questions? I'm going to try to keep this like not insanely complicated because the game of Overwatch is kind of like, yikes. Um, what you're playing, you guys are playing 6-0, and like what characters like these, like if this was a Hanzo, obviously like playing against a poke would be like less frowned upon. Maybe your Hanzo is just way better and can kill him every fight, so he's not a problem. Like, you can sort of see how, like, playing a little reactive is good, or whatever, reactive is good. And this goes into, like, game sense and stuff, like, factoring in, like, masses of information and having that affect how you play is really hard and it takes time and practice and, like, vodding and all kinds of stuff. So don't be too hard on yourself. And a lot of things I'm saying to you are going to be a little bit different later. 
So here we path really hard and like fast. This was like impressively fast, like fucking Overwatch fast, like Overwatch League fast. You were just like, Neow! like clean, clean as fuck. I like that. Like still don't love the pathing, but like I love the coordination. Like we didn't pre-fight and we didn't alt track here. They sort of just press five alts and we lose. I would have liked here. I don't, you guys don't use any alts here. But what I would have liked this information to be known. And this goes back. Like, the only thing differently I would have liked you guys to do, other than, like, the pathing thing, but, again, this is fine pathing with how fast you guys did it, um, is knowing they have five ults. I would have liked a dry fight to be called. Like, you guys dry fighted because you didn't have ults, but I would have liked this communicated. Because it shows you're fight. aware. What would you like, say? You're... Sure. What do you mean by dry fight? Sorry. Dry no, means, means, it means you're, oh, okay. you're going into the fight knowing you're going to lose, and you're, the whole point yeah. is to make them use ultimates to overcommit. Okay, gotcha. And dry fights can turn into winnable fights, and this goes back to, like, a dry fight is basically a guaranteed loss fight. You just, like, want it to last at max 20 seconds. It's sort of, like, because you want to, like, not hurt your time bank, but also, like, reset ult economy. The issue comes, like, when, like, a fight goes longer, like, if you dry fight for 60 seconds, you're throwing. Because, like, in that amount of time, they're going to get their ults back. They're going to Valk early, and then after that fight, be 80% to Valk again. So you sort of need to die fast to not feed ult charge. You guys do die fast here, and it's okay. Um, one thing that goes back to winnable and losable, this is, like, specific for dry fights, is if you go into a dry fight, you call losable, like, passively you're like basically agreeing that it's a lost fight so like you're ready to sort of feed your lives fast but if you like intro it with two kills and say you have beat or you have like you know reaper alt or grav like just one of them you know like you're still like down economy then you're 4v6 then you can call winnable and you can turn a dry fight into a one fight by committing alts so this is like anyone can call this kind of typically it's your main tank main support it, it's like these your main thing and your supports are going to be the ones calling most of the macro stuff. Pathing, you know, cooldown usage and all tracking. And, like, they're going to be coordinating 99% of it. The off tank is, like, a lot of the target calling and can participate sometimes. So you guys basically never talk. And it's, like, Sorry, basically, DPS. like, you just don't. Like, you can call low or stuff or like call if you're taking a duel, but that stuff is like really rare. Other than that, you need to like be quiet and listen because the information that these two are giving off, especially with alt tracking is really useful for you. Because if you go to duel their tracer, say Kree, and you don't know she has pulse, obviously you, like your, your 1v1 can turn very quickly into you respawning. If you do know she has pulse, then you're ready for that. You're ready for her to like blink into you and try to pulse and you can like roll away. You, you can play that with more information. Like, but you're not going to get that if you're not listening. And you're not going to get that if you're talking. So, sure. like, factor that stuff in. And that goes back to, like, playing reactive and having, like, a mass of information change how you play. Overwatch is complicated. Sort of tough. It's fine. You guys dry, die fast. But you can see, like, this was a dry fight on accident. Look at your alts. And look at theirs. This is like the power of a dry fight. Just for example, like for this being like a two CP esque map, like you, this is like you're getting in last fight territory with five ults versus one and it's pulse. You guys should have this. Like you guys could be like pretty bad and they could be pretty good, but you guys should win this anyway. Skill's not super a factor. Like, look. Fine. I want to compliment you a lot on this. This, like, whether you had all this information to make this call, this, like, you saying I got cart was, like, my mouth dropped. Because you're the closest one to your ult comparison to your BAP, so him being up here charging his ult is better. If anyone came to challenge cart, it would be their tracer, and you're probably most, most optimally the one to take that duel. And you're probably one of, like, the more like uh you're like good for pushing this but reaper's better with the lucio so you're like just the best person easily to stand on cart and the fact that you called for that made me really happy 
So that just goes back to knowing what roles every player has and knowing that Kree is kind of the, not the worst character on the team, but the worst hero Hulk. out of the six. He's the worst alt is the biggest thing, I think, right, in that case. Like, it's the, uh, what I was thinking well, in the moment the was that the, it's not worth <clears throat> it for me to try and go up there and trying to get high noon. It's more because we're chasing and, and cleaning up, uh, he's the least value. Yeah. Comparatively to yeah. the Reaper, Lucio, Bat, Reinzar. Yeah, because this is, it goes back to, like, what I said about your Anna. Like, it's just, like, in this moment, the responsibilities and the capabilities of your character are, like, the least in aggro pushing. So yeah. you taking card is best. Okay. So like, super pog that you identified that like really pog. You guys play aggro here. So here I'm gonna explain. Um, oh wait, I need to, I need to, keybinds don't work. Cool. Um, whenever cart is right here on this corner where the sign is, you only need one team fight to get cart back before they can regroup. Like it will push the whole way before they can reset. So like if you get a team kill and you get three on the cart, it will reach before they can like get to the corner and get to touch. Even if they go like, I mean, I guess if they go ball, but even then it's like really, really hard. It's like last second. So if you're Lucio boop them, he wouldn't get it. So like identifying this is like map specific, like there's a fucking lineup for it. But like taking fights too early, like right now, if you guys started brawling here, Okay, you're, you're gonna have to leave cart, so cart's not gonna be pushing. And if you do win this fight, cart's gonna be like around here and they're gonna get another fight. So instead of having this like second point as one fight, you're making it two. This is like not what you want, especially when there's a time bank involved. So this is like less about like this VOD, just general information. Like, you see how useless the tracer is? Man. Kind of toxic, but whatever. I'm going to comment again. This usage, try to use it to cycle your ultimates. Like, granted, you don't really have anything to cycle right now, but using window at the start of a fight is normally better because throughout a fight, you can get it, like, 60% back because it's just such an easily charged ult. Especially when you're playing Brawl and your healing output is super high. So try to use it really early and then like get it throughout the fight and like use it set up a play like quickly high noon with bubble with window and the fire strike and random stuff. And like anyone can call for this. Like if you wanna like and this is like sort of your main tank can call, you can call like I want a window early this fight. You're you're like any anyone can set up these plays. This is not one person, there's like nothing. It's like, yo, can we fire strike uh, window early this fight? Yeah. Yo, I want to look the high noon. Can you window it? Yeah, sure. Like, this is fine. Like, perfectly fine. Like, yo, I want to grab. We don't have anything to follow up. You want to just put a window in front of it? Like, yeah. What benefit do you get from high nooning through a window? So uh, it's like, you don't need to charge it all the way. High noon is actually a projectile. So when you charge up to half, it goes. the projectile goes through the window and get does double damage. Yeah. You can actually kill people with high noon at half charge. Yeah. You can just, like, you start can... it in Yeah. You can, you can, yeah, you can shoot quicker. Then. You can just like shoot immediately, basically. So, like, if you got bubbled, you could just fire, like, as you still had the bubble, like, you could just charge it for, like, because, like, you don't really need to kill anyone with it, per se. Like, it's ideal, but you don't have to. Like, if you hit their Rhine for 200 damage and break his shield, like, think about how much space you just made. You put their Rhine on, like, half, you yeah. broke his shield. So now your Rhine can amp speed in, and you guys win the fight off of it. Granted, it took two alts, but like think about how much space you made. Most of the time, the reason I said this alt's kind of useless is as a DPS. Like, this is like specific for DPS players, but kind of like you guys can get more macro information. Um, I'm gonna change my pen color so I can remember how to do that. Colorblind. Um, it's <laughs> it's more for zoning. Basically, like high noon is like can get kills but it's more for zoning dragon it can get kills but it's more for zoning uh there are other alts that are sort of useless pulse is like only for kills has no utility value really except for like grab and stuff these can be comboed well with like flux grab they can be set up and then they become lethal and can lead to kills but most of the time you're going to want to use them to control space and sort of tempo fights so if you high noon early for example like you put a window here and high noon on this corner 
like you control this space. It's yours. Anyone that stands in it, like immediately goes to the kill feed. So like that space for your Reinhardt, now he can close distance without getting spammed really hard. So then that goes like your Ryan is getting burned and dead all the time because they can't out heal like a Hanzo Storm Arrow damage boosted with a Discord. Like obviously Storm Arrow does 300 damage and then modify that like with 60%. Like your Ryan is going to get absolutely demolished. I don't care what healer you have. He's going to get burned to death really fast. So closing that distance for free at the cost of high noon is going to set up your Reaper, set up your Ryan because now they're close enough to deal damage. So you sort of see how this is like, yeah. Just because you're not getting kills, you're controlling space and setting up your teammates. Oh, yeah. In other words, we're garbage, we should just switch games, right? Huh? Never mind. Oh, yeah, I didn't. He was okay. making a joke, it fell through. Okay, I, I, I literally didn't hear it, unlucky. Just like my IQ after high school. Tough. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I've got to head out, guys. All right, peace out. Have a good one, Scribbles. Later. Take care. Later. Have a good one. This pathing's okay. It's dangerous because they have Hanzo. Like, this ult is kind of dangerous. What I don't love is this pathing. It's like, you're sort of going this weird way. Like, it doesn't really change anything. It doesn't really get value. It doesn't hurt because you're scouted the whole time because they have Tracer. So no matter what path you take, they're going to know. So you can just do whatever, but what I don't love is this. Because, like, again, you're sort of playing into their Hanzo and playing into them, like, really hard. I would have rather you guys play main because it plays more for your team because these sight lines are, like, shorter and easier to avoid. Because, like, if their Hanzo is here, then your Ryan's going to be shielding all of it when you come main. And if their Zen is here, he's not going to really have LOS to pressure you guys while you walk. So you get this corner for free. And then your Kree can probably force this guy down pretty easily when you guys are behind a shield. And then when he's moving, then you can look to amp speed because now they have no off angles. You're just like 6 VO, like, well, 6-5 uh, because they have Tracer and Tracer's useless. So you're just like amp speeding into them. And then, then like, again, you're setting up your Reaper. You're setting up your Ryan. Your Zarya is hopefully high charge from, like, the Hanzo spam and the Zen spam. Like, you could aggro beat into them. Like, this is where, like, you can start to, like, have a pre-fight, whatever, like, you see this pathing, how it sets up your team a little better. This is really unlucky, I will say. This character dying here was, like, literally just unlucky. Like, out of everyone on your team to die, this one was probably the worst to die because grab is pretty big. But you guys were playing for a Reaper alt. I would have rather you played for B. Like letting Hanzo shoot Ryan just to get 5% alt charge and then like beating like right here and just like like closing this distance with beat for free and then like isolating their Zen. Or forcing trance, and then once they trance, you can maybe cycle out. I don't know if you guys had this information, but like, I just don't like that these two ultimates, which are like some of the best ultimates in the game, weren't used. And like, they weren't talked about in the pre fight, and they weren't used really in the fights. Like, I'm pretty sure you guys beat here, but it's like a sort of like last fight beat, like I'm beating whatever value I get, it's good. I would have liked to see you guys play for these two, and then let the Reaper all be sort of like. You know, if he sees something, take it to get kills. It would have been better. Because, like, now you guys, like, are just pinched. You have, like, their main, like, four people here. Their, like, Hondo, maybe Mercy could be here, but she's not, so it's just one. And then their Tracer, again, being useless behind. Um, so, like, now you're tough. This is sort of because they picked you Zarya early and they knew you had Grav. So they sort of just like hard inted in with the, the idea that worst case scenario, we trance and back up, but they just win the fight anyway. So this is like unlucky to an extent, but also like we didn't plan very well because we had two of the best ults in the game and we didn't factor them in. That's like kind of it. I'm sure I could VOD a different map if you guys like wanted me to continue. 
I'm oh, down. I'm going to step away, uh, take care of my dogs real quick. If you want to save that as a separate recording, just because there's a lot of useful information in there. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll and, stop this recording.